Afternoon everyone. Today I'm waiting for uh, my friend Peter who's going to be taking us to the Carrigan Bano and the Kilmore Key area. So he's going to show us some uh, key historic sites and some history and we're going to take a look at two different areas of Wexford County. It's located on the southern portion of Wexford County and we'll see what we can uh, discover there. So now we'll just wait for Peter to show up and uh, we'll get on our way. Okay, good evening. Uh, we just arrived in Barrystown. We're just outside of uh, Bano. We're about four kilometers outside and we just stopped to a new, uh, a new viewpoint. Uh, I'm going to show you over there in the distance. I don't know if you can see it. There's the old ruins of a, looks like a chapel over there. We've got an old building of ruins up in the back there. The building and then the water right around you. So here's where you could uh, drop off boats, go into the water. So we just recently uh, put together. It's a nice little stop on your way. Uh, just to go from uh, from town to here, you have to go towards the New Line Road. It's about a 25-minute uh, drive. Uh, we're almost into Bano, so I just wanted to stop and show you this nice little viewpoint, and then we'll get going into the town. still outside Bano and this is uh, the entrance to Bano House. I have a photo of that in one of the old um, houses of Wexford. I have a it's, a, it's a book that has about 150 different houses in the old times in Wexford. I could I'll pop that in here so you can see what it looks like but there's the lodge house going in and then the walled area. It's a really nice little area. Okay, so we just arrived at uh, Black Hall Beach, Black Hall Strand it's called, uh, it's not far from uh, Bano, it's a very popular beach, and there's two little islands in front called the Kirox, and then behind them on the Kilmore side, I don't know if the GoPro can pick up, there's two bigger islands, but and those are uh, the Salty Islands. So we'll take a walk to the beach, it's, uh, it's a very popular one, it's, it's not as uh, busy as the ones that you get like in Kirklow Beach near Wexford Town. Um, and it's a nice look at the view here and the, that's, that's just lovely there, eh? And it goes all the way down. Down to the end there it's uh, Collins Town. It's really beautiful. I said the water's here and it's nice sand. It's not hard on the old feet. Some of the beaches in Wexford can be rocky. Um, Kirklow is, is very nice. Like uh, I'll be I'll be going to Kirklow Beach uh, sometime in the near future to show off that, and that's where they made the uh, Saving Private Ryan. But you can see the beach itself, the waves coming in, and the rocks right beside us. Okay, so we just arrived at uh, Bano Church. <coughs> Some cows grazing right on by the water. And here's the, the wall, the old wall, and the Bano Church in the back. <coughs> There's a sign here. It mentions a uh, secluded Bano Island, which is just over there. And it was uh, between the former Danish settlements of Wexford and Waterford and the Normans under Robert Fitz uh, Stephen, landed in 1169. The island is uh, viewed to be from behind the church, which makes the site of the resulting town. So now we're going to walk up into, 
into the graveyard and see the church, the, uh, the chapel. And just to, just to mention, this is all part of the Norman Way. There's a website that you can follow it. So the first place I stopped at, with that the beach, or, or not the beach, the uh, the place where you dock the boat, that's part of the Norman Way as well. So here's the sign about the information that you can read up. But so basically, it goes back to the 1200s. It explains the uh, the roofless church now, but we're going to go in and look at it. It also explains that it was like a, a port town. And in 1348, the Black Death arrived on the shores uh, in Bano. And between 1348 and 1349, 50 percent of the residents of Bano passed away. See the old gravestones? It's all rocky. It's different than a lot of the graves that you see around Wexford that are all grass with the rocks that are around the actual plot itself. But, uh, the history here. It even has a pulpit here. The stone was erected by the Battle Historical Society in 2019 to recognize the 850th anniversary of the arrival of the Anglo-Norman in Ireland. In 1169, Robert Fitzstephen and his troops landed at Bano to aid the beleaguered King Dermot McMurrah. The town which was later founded here is only marked by the surviving church. So everything, the town used to be here, but now it's just the church itself. So watch your head, we'll go down. And here's the existing church. And the graves inside here. This is similar to what we saw when we went to the um, South Scarabbi tour. And this is where the bodies would be put. The slab would be over on top. And yeah, just like in South Scarabbi, the hole, that was to release the uh, the gases in that, because if not, the gas in the body would actually explode and push the, uh, the top off. So, here's inside the front of the church. timber holding up the entrance way and the ground like I said 1200s so you're looking 900 year old very interesting To watch your head getting out of here. Okay, just at the other side of the uh, graveyard, if you go around the back of the, the chapel, then you see there's actually some green space here, and this is newer, so it's still being used. And apparently, last even last week alone, there was two burials here, and you could see this vault here, which is relatively recent, um, was built. Um, it was built by John Neal and Prince Michael of Saltese. So we mentioned the Saltese Islands before that are just outside of the Kilmore. Uh, well, his mother and father were buried here and so they erected this vault. So you see the different names of the people that are entombed in this vault. And it's a shrine or a monument to, to remember them. And it says on there, men should never forget God. Men should never forget his father and mother and man should be kind and helpful to the young and old. Very good. And then, like you said, there's a little bit of green patch here on this side. I guess it's also protected by the uh, chapel. And it goes all the way around again.
and then you're at the front of the, front of the chapel where we walked around the first part. It goes to the place where we came in and leave. So even though the gate is locked, there's always access to it. You can see there's the steps and the hole in the wall so people can go in and go out, pay their respects. Just no vehicles and the vehicles will probably only come during the burials. But a very interesting uh, grave and chapel and very well can very well in good condition considering the age of it. So yeah, part of the normal way and here's the steps. So just get in and get out. Okay, so we're in Cohenstown now. First place I'm going to show you, it's called the Shell House, and you can see it's aptly named for the, the front of it and the sides, all covered with shells. There's a little entranceway there. So, dedicated to the memory of Kevin L. French, who designed and crafted the artistic shell work on this cottage. So, take a look at it, like, it's very ornate. It's really something different. And it's an old thatch cottage as well. The Mexico is the name of the ship. Obviously a nautical theme. You'll see where it's located on. There's even a little place to sit on. You're right onto the beach. So in the, win in the winter time, this is probably very, very difficult to stay at. In the summertime, it's one of the beautiful places to go. Now you see here, we have the sulky sauna. So I think you come here and enjoy the sauna. There's a little sign that's on the, you know, right by the beach. It tells you when it's open. Here it is. This space is reserved for the salty sauna, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can see people swimming in the ocean right there. And in the view. And those are those two islands from before that we saw. Right? So that's Collins Town. Very uh, scenic beach. It's not far from where we just were in Bano. And now I'm going to show you the Ball Alley. It's a little bit different than the one we saw in Timon. It's an outdoors one. There's a little sign about the, uh, the wildlife and that around here. Bylaws for the beach. And look inside. Here's the ball alley itself. And there's the beach. I'm going to try to see if we can look in from if it opens up or maybe check from the higher part of this wall. There we go. Yeah. Right by the, uh, the water. Yeah. Here's the door, it's open to get in. It's very different, eh? Compared to the uh, the indoor ones that we have now. So you can play handball for a bit, jump in the beach, and go into the sauna. And then there's some parking over there for the cars. And if you look off in the distance, they have the wind uh, generators. Oh, and here's 
plaque at the handball in memory of Sergeant James Curran, Private Peter Conlin, Private James Keogh, Private Joseph Tinsley, who lost their lives in Colletown Strand, County Wexford, the 27th of January, 1941, while making a safe a sea mine washed ashore. And there's the Collinstown Handball Alley, built in 1912. So you're looking at 110 years old. It was damaged by the storm in October 24th and rebuilt in 25. I don't know if you can make out that sign, it's Collinstown Strand. And we're right on the beach, but that's how close it is. areas of that if you wanted to have something to eat while you're at the beach. Okay, so we just walked to the end in a concert. We, we look over in front of you, that's a walk from Kilmore. That's what's around there. And here's the estuary that goes into the Kurok River that goes up towards the Folks Mill area. And you can see it's obviously it's a tidal river, so the tide brings the water in and out. See the big rocks have been put on the bottom of that to uh, stop uh, some erosion. As you see the houses up on top there, they're not too far from the ocean water. And then if you look all the way back down there, that's where we started from. You can see the uh, the roof of the, the shell house. And and over, if you look really farther, you can see the Scalag Islands off Kilmore. One day I'll take a trip out to the Scalag Islands. There's puffins and that that live on there. Uh, you can get it uh, on a day boat and you can go and spend the, uh, the day there and you come back the same night. So now we'll just walk back towards the car and move on to the next place. Yeah, so we're back at the car park at the bottom part and just to mention that there's uh, toilets there as well right where the beach is so it's handy you can come down here and there's picnic benches places to sit up so like I said it's not too far from Wexford town you're looking about 35 minute drive depending on the traffic just watch out for the new iron road it can be lethal you see the buildings behind there Eat more fish than is, and that, those are all the processing plants. So when the uh, fish get off loaded off the uh, boats, they're brought here, processed, and then shipped out. So those are the salty islands. You can probably see them a little bit more, see how close they are. It's not too far. When we're in Bano, they're a lot farther away. So you come here, you take a uh, the little ferries and they would ferry you out there for the day. And here we're just walking up to the end. So this would be a continuation if you wanted to follow it down there. It would take you all the way to where we were Collins Town before. There you can see all the seagulls just sitting there taking it easy while the waves come in. Have a little bit of dinner. And Goes all the way out. Here's the rib bone from a fin whale washed ashore on the beach in 2000. Now we're entering the memorial garden to those that lost at sea. Opened on June 17th, 2001 by Hugh Byrne, TD, Minister of State. There's the wheel of the ship. Love the stone pattern of the compass. The undersides of the steering of the ship. And 
an anchor up there, a mast. Go up in it. So this all resembles like the side of a ship. And then it has all the names of the people that lost at sea and you can see them. There's plenty of them. There's a lot of young people too. Side, it's more. Still more. And there, see, we remember we had the tour of Wexford Town. There's the fight, uh, the model town, and the fight, the fight, the fight, model town. Trinity Place, the fight. So it's all waits for people. And then there's some more. An anchor over there. And one there. And then there's some more names. Okay, so this is the Kilmore Key where you would start if you wanted to walk to Collinstown where we were before. So You'd have to have a good, a good pair of boots on you or take your boots right off in your socks and then you can walk along the water's edge. And if you see, the loop goes all the way around and uh, right in the corner in Collinstown, that's where we were, where they had the uh, shell house and the, uh, the ball alley. So you can see it's a lovely walk. The beach is just pristine, it's all sandy. And it starts right here. So the rocks are right there. And the other side of that is the harbor where we were just looking at the, the ships and that and the, the garden, the, the, the memorial garden. So you can see it's a beautiful little walk. You can park up at Kilmore Key and walk all the way to Collinstown and back. All right. That's it for now. There, I found a nice little fix me upper there. Just a little bit of work and you'd be out on the sea in no time. I'd say it's seen better days. And then there's the back of the processing plants when you get in. And then we're going back on the road back towards where you see the boats when they come in at the uh, harbor. Just over there. So that'll be it for tonight. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you, you like, comment, subscribe, and share it out. And the next one I'll be doing, I'll be doing my preparatory for the uh, Ben Nevis walk, which will be uh, next week. So the Saturday I'm gonna go to one of the local barbers, get my hair cut, pick up some supplies, pack up and get ready for Ben Nevis. So that'll be the next one coming and then we'll have a couple parters coming up next week uh, when I go to Ben Nevis. I'll be leaving early on uh, Friday morning at 3.30 in the morning and I won't be being back till Tuesday at half 12 in the morning. So there'll be several videos, vlogs sent out on that and I'll take you along my experience climbing the UK's highest mountain. Thank you.